I'm looking at uh, the S&P 500 best performers right now. You've got Danaher at the top, up 8.4%. General Electric, the second best performer of the day, up by 7.4%. It would appear that investors see this as a win-win deal for both companies. But come on, someone comes out ahead. Which well, that's one? what we called it a win-win. I mean, when's the last time you saw a deal of this size, $21 billion, where both companies rallied on the news, but for very, very different reasons? And spell out those reasons, first of all, for GE, because many would say, uh-oh, they're losing a really high-growth part of their business now. Yeah, this, so for GE, this is good news on three parts of the announcement. So first, on the divestiture news, we had said, and this is not a surprise to us, we had said at the beginning of the year, watch for GE to make a decision to carve out the life sciences piece. Uh, it trades at a might, much higher multiple than the diagnostic imaging. They get a much better valuation, and there they did it. And we also said Danaher would be the natural buyer. So uh, they did get to the finish line. Kudos. Um, and so what that does is that um, uh, there's going to be 20 billion of uh, after-tax proceeds for GE that helps solve their liquidity challenge. So this has been the big reason that GE has been under pressure is concerns about their leverage. Well, now they have 20 billion that people didn't know with certainty yesterday that now is going to be applied to the leverage uh, and to allow them to delever. Two other really important parts of the announcement that you had to read below. Secondly, they're going to hold a conference call on on May 7 to disclose more information about their long-term health care insurance. Mm -hmm. Everyone's worried about this. This was the big uh, reason a year ago they took that $15 billion charge. There's going to be more information in their K and, May, and March 7 is going to be that date. And then there was another announcement on March 14 they're going to host an Outlook conference call where we expect to give uh, Larry Koppel give his whole turnaround plan and guidance. Wow. And I'm glad you bring up all those different points because our David Weston spoke with Larry Kopp a little bit earlier and uh, talked about uh, the debt reduction, what it means going forward. And here's what Larry Kopp said. He says, we've laid out a two-part strategy of reducing debt and fixing the power business. This is a significant step on debt reduction, but it doesn't say anything about our prospects in fixing power. I mean, that's what it boils down to. What is the growth story here for GE? He hasn't articulated that yet. Yeah, we haven't seen uh, all the cards laid on the table yet. And there's multiple fronts that he's had to contend with. Uh, the liquidity challenges, that's being addressed, and there's more to come. Uh, there'll be the health care spin uh, when that uh, gets executed. But there's fixing power is still uh, an uh, open-ended challenge. Uh, we know that he's splitting power into basically a good bank and bad bank. And uh, what we'll hear more details on March 14, what the plan is on the turnaround. What gets divested, what actually gets fixed, and is remains core. What do you want to hear from him? So we need to hear that more specifics around the part that the, is the bad bank, the, the GE or the, the power portfolio. We think a number of those assets are set for divestiture rather than trying to fix for the long term. That's what we'd like to get more specifics on. And what about Dana Her here? Because for me, it's fascinating that he's selling this business to the company he used to run. Obviously, that rather makes it clear that he knew that it would suit them very well, but could there be any regulatory issues in any of this? So, look, it's no surprise that Danaher is the natural buyer. We were talking about this a year ago. So now it, it, it helps get them to the finish line. Larry Culp knows exactly what their playbook is. Mm -hmm. So he knows what kind of synergies they're able to uh, derive. And I think that all helped them get to the finish line faster. Um, regulatory, you know, that, that is an area that will be taken care of and will get scrutinized. Uh, I'm sure that there, you know, there's no holdings that anyone is supposed to be um, concerned about here. But it does, it, it's just, it's very ironic that you have him uh, literally having been on both sides of, uh, of the table and that helped get to the finish line.